We're live. All right, great. I'm back. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> yeah. Um back from Europe, Eastern Europe. <clears throat> um I guess we should say right off the bat, uh John's not here. He's still in LA hanging out. Yep. And this is not going to be about E3 this episode. Right. Uh, as much as we would have liked to do it, we want to wait till John's back to hear about what he was playing down there and what he saw. And so we're next quite week's aware episode, that there's a lot of E3 stuff to talk about. So, Right, yeah. yeah. So we're even going to like skip news this week because everything's going to relate to E3 announcements. So next episode, which should be later this week, uh, most likely Thursday, I'm assuming. Oh, John's um, not back until Friday, I think. Is he back on Friday? What? No. Wait, hang on. No, he's back on Thursday. That's the day he comes 25th. back. So, oh, okay. I, I, well, okay. It depends. It'll be sometime this week. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. next episode will be our big E3 one. So uh, uh, get ready for that. Um, uh, but for now, um, uh, we'll just, yeah, we'll talk about the two of us. Uh, as yeah. I said before, the third guest is the love between the two hosts. There you go. Um, how how was how was your last two weeks? It was fine. Uh, last week there was no love between the two hosts, so we had to get in another guest. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. That, how did that go? I didn't hear. I didn't listen to the episode. I was pretty busy. No, yeah, no, uh, it, it went totally fine. Uh, the guest was the guy I do the Burning Barrel podcast with now because Nathan said he doesn't like the internet. So sure, he kind sure. of isn't We've been available. There. Yeah. All right. So, right. yeah, it was him, so we talked last week. But more importantly, how was your trip? Because I did nothing. I sat here and, like, watched press conferences. So, Right. I'm, and I'm slowly going through them. At the, at the time of this recording, mm-hmm. uh, I've, well, I've watched the first three. There's some doozies uh, already that we could talk about, like, we, next week. We'll get into all that. But, yeah, yeah I, will, I, will just, I will just say, man, EA. Any, oh, my gosh. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, my trip. Um. Yeah, it was great. Uh, Eastern Europe was cool. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> had like the like I got some of that John luck for my uh, for my travels with public transportation. Oh no! Um, let me walk you through this this minefield, if you will. Um, first off, very first flight. Right, I'm I'm about ready to do a nine hour flight to Sweden. It's delayed five hours. Okay. Which is okay. That's insane. Five hour delay. That was crazy. Um, so not only did I have to sit around for five hours, then I had a nine hour flight. So that was just a lot of sitting around and waiting. Um, also, that first flight, I was right behind a baby. Oh, good. That's fun. Yeah. Oh, always fun. God, I hate babies so much. Yeah. Let me let me tell you. They shouldn't be fact, allowed on come, planes. They shouldn't be allowed outside. Like, agreed. Don't take your kid out of the house until they're like rational until you can be like you have to be quiet or at least until you can bribe them or beat them or something yeah um maybe bribe them (laughs) sure but don't don't beat your kids (laughs) sure Um, (laughs) in fact my uh my plane ride home the final one again the nine hour flight back uh i had the whole row to myself right three seats to myself, I That's was like, great. this is perfect. I can stretch out, lay down. It'd be great. But for whatever reason, um, just the image and the concept of me stretching out, lying down, taking up those three seats to get a nap in was like a trigger for the baby one row ahead of me and to the right to start crying. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Every single time I would try to lie down, that kid was like, he was waiting he he had my number he knew it he and that thanks kid also the flight back no good movies they had four movies two of which i had seen who had, like what the what airline has four movies to pick from i'm guessing air canada <laughs> no this was all this was all norwegian i was oh, fine, weird but, what um, movies like on the way back it was there was a french animated movie there was something with mark Wahlberg. Okay. And I can't remember the other two. Okay. The way there, though, movies were great. I watched, I watched Gone Girl. I watched Wild. They had, there were some good movies in there. But anyway, um, so let me just one-up this story with some other bad travel sh- trips. When we, were in, when we were in Tallinn, which is Estonia, 
Yep. We took a day. We took a day trip out of there to Helsinki, Finland. Okay. By ferry. Um, but it was just for the day, so we were gonna have to take the ferry back. And during the day trip in Helsinki, we took a uh, short ferry to this little island fortress to go see that. And we knew, like, hey, we have to make sure we get the ferry back at this time so that we can get the big ferry back to Estonia uh, for the night because that's where our, our hostel is. So we take the ferry, the, the small ferry back into Estonia, and we're going to uh, – sorry, we take the small ferry back to Helsinki, and we're going to the big ferry, and they've canceled that ferry. Uh, and the lady's like, well, didn't you receive, like, our text message update? And it's like, no, we don't have cell service here. Yeah. So, no, we did not. So, you know, they refund the ticket, but our only option if we want to get back that day is to go to a different ferry line, buy a more expensive ticket, and then wait three hours. Oh, also, that's cool. this new ferry is twice as slow. So instead of a one hour ferry ride back to Estonia, it's like a two and a half hour ferry ride. So we got in at like midnight as opposed to like seven, what it should have been. Great. So that was really annoying. Let me just one up that with an even worse travel. Oh dear story. God! So this is when we were leaving Estonia, uh-huh. and we were headed to Copenhagen, Denmark. Okay. So we had a we had a stopover in Norway at, at Oslo, just a connection. Should have been like an hour layover. We take the first flight. We, we arrive in arrive in Oslo. We're headed to our next plane. It's been canceled. Great. Yeah, that was awesome. So we're like. Well, where are our bags? Because they were supposed to just be moving along, mm-hmm. and and so you know we're going to talk to the person like you know um, where's our bags going to show up? And they say oh it's going to be this conveyor belt, not the normal one where everyone else from that flight's bags are going to be. So I'm waiting for them. I'm waiting for them, and they're taking a while. So you know I tell my girlfriend, hey, why don't you go on ahead to the ticket place? Because you know they're gonna they're gonna try and set us up with a new flight. Why don't you go start getting that handled? I'll wait for the bags and catch up. So she takes off. I'm waiting for the bags. Her bag shows up. Mine never does. Great. My bag is lost. They don't know where it is. Great. Okay. So I'm like, so what What do I do here, uh, ticket lady? Please tell me what I should do about my bag. She's like, well, you should go to the ticket place, get your new ticket, and then hope that your bag is on that flight like they just noticed that the numbers line up and they put it on that flight. And then if not, when you're in Copenhagen, file a report. And I'm like... Yeah, but like two days once I arrive in Copenhagen, I'm I'm going back to America. A report's not going to help much. Yeah, like I'm gonna I'm not going to be there long enough to get my bag. They she doesn't know what to do then. Great. <clears throat> She's like, well, maybe it'll show up here later. Why don't you go to your ticket? Then you can like talk to this other person. And I was like, okay. So you know, I go up to the ticket place. We have new tickets. Uh, our new flight now sends us to Trondheim to get a connection flight to Copenhagen. So I have another two planes to take. And I'm like, are you kidding? Another connection flight? Like, I don't know where my bag is. I want this to be as simple as possible. So we go back to the ticket place. I'm like, is there anything more direct? No, that's our only option is to take another two planes. Great. So we're like, okay, well, let's go check in. So that part's done. And then we can go and look for my bag. Yeah. Turns out we're not allowed to check in without my bag. Oh, good. I like I'm allowed to check in, but yeah. then my bag's not coming. You have to check in with what is going to be on the plane. Yeah, sure. So I'm like, okay, um, how long do I have to find my bag then? She's like, well, you have to check in 30 minutes before the boarding time, which is 30 minutes before the mm-hmm. the flight. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I have 35 minutes to find my bag. Great. So I go to one desk. She sends me to another desk. She sends me to another desk. Finally, one lady's like, yeah, I'll try and help you out. She finds my bag. We check in. I take a flight to Trondheim. I take a flight to Copenhagen. We show up like four hours later than we should have. Yeah. Did you just that like, w- when you found your bag, were you just like, oh, thank God. <laughs> when she was, when she came walking with my bed, because I was like, I was stressed out. I, w- I had convinced myself I'm not going to get my bag until like next weekend when I'm in America. Like I'm going to arrive home and my bag's not going to show up for like a week. Right. But she showed up with my bag, and I was like, "Oh, it was it was such a relief." I I could not thank her enough. Nice, <clears throat> but um, yeah. <laughs> Other than that, though, trip was was awesome. Awesome, really cool stuff. Um, if anyone was following my Instagram, I, I posted just a ton of photos. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I'm gonna try and think of some of the highlights. We saw a bunch of castles. Um, 
some cool caves. Actually, in um, where were the, we took a day trip out of Riga, which is Latvia, mm-hmm. and we came across this. I don't even know how to describe it. You know, like Cart World, how it has like a few different things. Like it's got go karts and it's got paintball, or not it's got paintball. It's got a uh, laser tag. Sure. And it's got an arcade and yeah. stuff like and mini golf. It's kind of like that, except more. Um, like athletic stuff, so it has like zip lines mm-hmm. and um, like a jungle gym course and little go karty things for the younger kids. It also had this toboggan like thing. You sit one person on it, and it's it's stationed on a single track, and you just go whizzing serpentine down the hill, and you can push forward on the on the little joystick to go faster, and you can pull back to break. Huh. Okay. Um, and like, and you're going like pretty fast. Like, I was getting nervous. Like, I'm on a single track. <laughs> you know, like, is this gonna? Are one of these turns? I'm just gonna like roll over. But that was that was cool. And it was like two euros, so that was good. Hmm. And another thing, this giant ball. Try and think of like, you're in like a roller coaster seat. Yeah. And then you're surrounded by like a pontoon. Like this thing's huge. Okay. And then they pull it up the hill. And then roll you down the hill. Oh no! No. So you're rolling. going upside down, and no. you're. No. Oh. And they do it twice for like four euros. I'm getting sick just thinking it was, about it. It was awesome. In fact, you start upside down, and then they roll you down. It, that was really cool. Huh. Um, and then from there, we were walking towards the caves, and we found a little place uh, in the forest for lunch, just off off the road. Um, there wasn't much to eat, so we were like, "Yeah, let's let's stop here." And we decided to sit outside on the uh, um, there was a bunch of picnic tables and then for whatever reason the picnic table that we sat on had like a stack of maybe about like a foot and a half high of magazines all of which were playboy (laughs) that's great that's fantastic (laughs) and like i don't i don't know like i couldn't read it it was latvian or eastern europe like it was some language i could not read um and what you're thinking is yeah who looks at playboy for the articles though right yeah Maybe it's been a while since I looked at a Playboy. Sure. 95% of it were articles. Yeah. No, it's true. <laughs> That's ins- well, cuz I've like I like I I've looked at very little Playboys, but the last one I remember like was full of like the ladies, and right? Yeah. This one had like three pages of a girl, and then the rest were actual articles, which hey, I tried to read them, believe me, but they weren't in English. So sure. I didn't have a choice but to look at the girls. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was forced to look at beautiful women. Naked. I tried to read the thing about the watch, but it was in English. Oh, okay. Honest to God, officer. Anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, that was just, that was funny. He had just a ton of Playboys there. So, you know, you find some Latvian Playboys in the forest. That, nice. was, that was a funny thing. <clears throat> Makes sense. All right, I'll give you one more story because I teased you about this when we were setting up. Okay. This is super awkward. Okay, so... Yeah, here we go. Uh, my girlfriend and I went to a strip club there, and we were just like, this would be funny to do it. It was our first day in Estonia. We, neither of us had been have been to a strip club before. Okay, that was going to be my first question, so continue. Yeah, neither, so this was just like, hey, this would be kind of silly to do. We'll just go there for and see what it's like, and then we're done, and we can say we did something weird on the trip. Sure. Um... Yeah, so first one we've ever done it. So, you know, we go in, we pay the cover, we go sit down, we're the only ones there. That's awkward. Yeah. That's already real awkward. So we're sitting in the corner. Yep. Okay. And I guess because, you know, there's there's customers there now, they have to start dancing. So they put the music on, the girl does the, the girl goes and dances, she does her thing. So were they then just she... like hanging out before you got in? Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So and then so she does her dance and then she comes over and she's and she's like uh tip and we're like oh yeah that's right you tip at a strip club oh sure. we 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 it just completely for didn't even occur to us you know we've never done this we have no cash on us whatsoever uh, great okay we just spent the last little bit of cash uh for the cover to get in and we're you know we're 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 being quite uh cheap on the trip because you know uh just to save money and stuff so sure <clears throat> so we don't want to spend that much um but we were like oh my gosh i'm so sorry we we i we didn't even think about the tip oh my gosh oh my and she she's like yeah normally like you normally have to you know you give a tip and stuff for for the girls and we're like you're right um 
and I had a 20 on me, but oh, I didn't no. want to give a 20. Yeah, no. And I was like, and I was like, can I go get change at the bar? And her English wasn't great. So, um, so, uh, she, I think what she said to me was you can, but they'll only give you five back. Like they'll charge you $15 to break this 20. Amazing. Okay. And I was like, I'm, oh my, I, I can't do that. I can't give you tw- like i'm happy to give you a fi- like a five or a ten sure but i'm not paying fifteen dollars <laughs> to then give you five dollars sure yeah um so like my girlfriend was like okay here's like all the coins i have and it wasn't much it was maybe a couple <laughs> euros and Amazing. then the stripper the stripper was like i guess i'll go buy like an ice cream or something and then she walked off and then we're like let's leave and go yeah, to bed let's we gotta get out of here it, it was so awkward and people in the chat are saying you know you know you're supposed to tip strippers that's it's totally on us we should have known that but for yeah. whatever reason it just didn't occur to us it slipped our mind and we were we were not adequately prepared well you're and not we paid strip club goers you don't we're go not, every no. weekend to the club so like- no <laughs> no it was definitely like, hey some your first time's awkward i guess i <laughs> it's not our thing um that was that was an that was really awkward. I felt so bad for the girl. This all sounds um, really cringy as fuck. Just like it walking was super into a strip cringy. club I and mean, there's like, no one around. <laughs> I mean, like looking back, it's funny, right? That's why I'm telling the story. Hopefully, someone's laughing. <laughs> but and like I find, I think it's funny now. Looking back, I think it's it's a funny story. Hopefully, someone's but at, laughing. <laughs> but at the but at the time, like oh my gosh, it was the worst. Anyway, uh, yeah, the trip was great though. Um, I guess kind of bringing it back to games a bit. They, they, there's just like no game stores over there. I like couldn't find any game. And we went to a lot of malls and stuff. Weird. And I know like Estonia specifically is quite poor. I'm assuming Re- uh, Latvia is a bit poor too because that's where the cheapest stuff were. Yeah. But um, yeah. I I don't think I. The only time I found games was there was a bookstore where there was some video games in there, um, where you could get like a four-year-old copy of a connect game for still $60. And I was like, are you kidding me? In fact, they had PSP games there for at least $40. And I was, wow. so that was, yeah. I was like, are you joking? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then the other one was I, we found a store that was basically like a Toys R Us, just a bit smaller. Okay. So it had a small game section, which was composed entirely of 3DS games, a couple Wii games, and then one Connect Xbox game, that Nike Fuel Fitness thing. Great. For like 30 bucks. That and sounds like, like the Toys like, R Us by is... my place. Fuck. And then just a ton of Toys to Life stuff, which of course. Yeah, like of course. Of course. Um, but yeah, other than that, no games. In fact, like as you know, I was excited for some street passing. Yeah. I street passed two people. Oh, man. Not from the states. In total, I think in total, I street passed four people. Two of which were from America. Okay. The other two were from Norway, and I got them when I was arriving there from the airport, and when I was leaving there from the airport. So they weren't even. I from didn't there. street pass anywhere at all. It would have been hilarious if you street passed the stripper that <laughs> you didn't. Yeah. Hit. <laughs> she just like has a DS in the back. That's what she was doing before you walked in. I guess. Playing. Yeah. <clears throat> that 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 would have been weird. Yeah. Uh, but um, yeah, just no street passing at all, which was crazy because wow. like I'm used to hostels. You get tons of people. Just no one. I, the, I wow. guess games are just not really a thing over there. <clears throat> I wasn't seeing like any advertisements really um, for game stuff anywhere. Um, yeah. In fact, like I was even in like Tallinn of Estonia, which I understand Tallinn is kind of the Silicon Valley of Estonia because that's where they invented like Skype and stuff. And their one university yep. is a technical call is a university of tech. Uh, still nothing. I didn't street pass anyone. So that was just weird. That was super weird. That is. Hmm. Um, but anyway, now I'm back. Uh, and and now we can do the podcast, the top down perspective. Yeah. Big, big, big lead in topic there. 20 minutes in. There you we can go. Start the show. Well, welcome back and welcome back everybody listening. It is June the twenty first. We're doing it a little bit late because of jet lag, <laughs> I'm assuming, and trying to just get back. To yeah, no life. that that first night, I went to bed at, at like ten, pretty normal time. Yeah, woke up at three, just wide awake. Yeah, just and then yet last night, 
fall asleep at like seven. Yeah. Wake up at nine thinking <laughs> I should just keep sleeping. But I was like, no, this is just going to keep happening. So I, so I'm like, okay, I'll make some dinner. End up staying up till one. Yeah. Wake up at seven again the next day today. Yeah. My sleep schedules. It's uh, messed, messed up. up. It is messed up. Are you going to be able to get to work? Okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we'll see how tired I am at work tomorrow, but, um, <clears throat> anyway, I'm good now. That's what's important. Yeah, cool. So what were you playing yeah. while you were traveling around? Oh, yeah. Sean Paul, that's who's here. Yeah, that's us. Got it. Got to introduce us. John's again, gone. again, John's still hanging out in LA. Yes. Which I understand is like over a hundred degrees Fahrenheit today. Gross. That's disgusting. Uh, I mean, I'm jealous. I, I love the heat, but anyway, what have I been playing? Okay. So two weeks. Uh, surprisingly not much, uh, on the trip, you know, obviously I didn't have a ton of time to play <clears throat> mm-hmm. games, but, um, uh, for the majority of it, I was playing, uh, puzzles and dragons, like I had mentioned. Yeah. Um, so I was continuing with, uh, puzzle and Dra- Mario puzzle and dragons. Mm-hmm. Um, and just like everyone said, <clears throat> that game gets way too grindy and I don't like that game anymore. Oh, it's specifically um, as soon as you finish world two the difficulty ramp goes up crazy that you have to start grinding stuff um and i just did not want to devote that time to it uh and it's it's really odd that they do such a difficulty spike i could understand that in like a free-to-play game to try and entice you to like buy continues and buy power-ups and you know pay to win and stuff sure but this this isn't a free-to-play game you paid your 40 bucks to get the game why even have that kind of a spike? <clears throat> mm-hmm. So th- that was kind of a bummer. I then started playing um, some Puzzle and Dragon Z, the other one on that cartridge. Uh-huh. Um, it's way more in depth. Like you actually walk around like a town and stuff and talk to people and there's like quests and whatnot. Way more in depth. Um, the writing is just terrible. It's so dumb. Um, <laughs> okay. It, yeah. It is. The writing is so stupid. But um, that was fine, but I was getting to the point where to finish, like, one dungeon or whatever, you had to play, like, so much, like, so many, uh, I guess, puzzles in a row that I was just kind of getting tired of it. And I think I was just getting tired of playing Puzzles and Dragons. Sure. Because uh, yeah. that's all I was playing. <laughs> I think I'm done with Puzzles and Dragons Z, and I'm definitely done with Puzzles and Dragons Mario. I'm not going to go back to that. Okay. Um, that's kind of too bad. Then around this time, um, Fallout Shelter came out. Yeah. I, I watched the Bethesda press conference. Mm-hmm. Um, so I downloaded that, and that game's really cool. Yeah. Uh, it's, um, I guess it's just on iOS right now. It is. Yeah. Yeah. So you haven't been able to try it. But it's, you know, it's a management sim, Tiny Tower esque. But you, you basically, for those who don't know, you have. Uh, you have a you have a fallout shelter, and you get to make different rooms that can do things. Like one will produce water for the shelter, one will produce food and electricity. Some will do like med kits, stuff like that. But people will randomly show up and want to join your shelter, so you can let them in and get them put them to work. <clears throat> and um, uh, you can everyone has stats, so if you have like good strength, they'll do better in like the power plant. So you want to try and mix it around your people and get the best combinations to make things happen faster. And you can even speed up the uh, the countdown it takes to get the resources by rushing it. That's that's what the feature is called, rush. Okay. Um, and it'll give you a percentage chance that it's not going to happen correctly. Um, and when it does, you know you get all the things right away, and it's great. When it doesn't, though. Like the room catches on fire, or a bunch of uh, uh, roaches break in and stuff. And when that happens, it's usually like real bad. I've had a couple of cases where uh, mutated roaches or rats or whatever came in and just killed everyone. And then you can even you can have some people die and then revive them for some money. Um, but if people are still working in the room where the person died. Uh, they just start getting sad and they keep and you get little like thought bubbles from everybody and they'll just be like, what smells really? It smells like someone died in here. Oh, right. Or they'll just be like, it's kind of it's kind of gross working beside a corpse. Yeah, and you can and you can get rid of the corpses or you can try and revive them because um, it gets harder to get more people uh, less start showing up at the front door. So you have to start um, making your your, uh, you know, your citizens or whatever. Uh, reproduce 
if you put like a man and a woman in the crew quarters, they'll start talking and you know, it eventually happen. If one of them has like a high charisma, uh, stat, it'll happen faster. Sure. And then they'll kind of like get all happy and hearts will be like fluttering above them and they'll like go behind a curtain and then they'll come out and the, the woman will just be pregnant at that point. That's how it works. Yeah. Yeah. That is how it works. Um, that's why we got rid of all curtains around this house. <laughs> and then you get to uh, like name the kid and whatnot. And that's how you get more workers. Um, and then another cool thing about it is you can actually send your citizens out into the wasteland to like gain experience and find stuff. Okay. And then bring them back whenever you want and stuff like that. So, you know, when I started unlocking better guns, I would equip my guys and then send them out. But it's really cool. It looks it looks real great. Um the the only way to put money into it is if like every now and then after you've like reached certain levels you'll get these packs of what essentially look like the booster packs from Hearthstone like a pack of cards that end up equaling like uh you know like new equipment new just some money stuff like that and you can buy those packs if you want to get things faster but that's the only way to really put money in there okay. apart and then it's all just in game currency um so yeah, no, it works uh, pretty good, and it kind of just blows a lot of uh, other free-to-play games out of the water because they don't really need to make that much money with this. It's just a side project, uh, whereas other free-to-play games, like this is their only game, so you know the, the monetization is a lot more heavy. But yeah, if you have an iOS device, I definitely recommend checking it out. It is free, so... That came um, at a good time for you while you were traveling. Yeah, that was quite nice. The only thing was uh, I had very little space on my phone, so I had to do a lot of management, like try and upload all my photos to Dropbox and stuff to get some space. Uh-huh. But yeah, no, that came out at a good time. I played that on my on the plane ride back. Um, but again, things can just go like, things can get real hairy when like a big roach thing happens because they were like moving through the rooms, killing everyone, and then my whole thing was just dead. Um, so that can happen pretty quick. <clears throat> And then the game I've been playing most uh, last couple days is Legend of Zelda Minish Cap. How is it? Uh, It's good. I've never played it before, and I always wanted to. Okay. I shouldn't say that. I played the first dungeon uh, like a couple years ago Mm -hmm. and then stopped. I don't remember why. Probably games were coming out. But I had a bunch of time now, and now I've done like four dungeons or something. I'm... Where am I? I'm in the graveyard area now for people who have played it. I don't know if you've played it on the Game Boy Advance. Never. No. No. I, uh, I'm playing it on my DS or my 3DS. Uh, it was one of the Ambassador Program games. Mm-hmm. So I've had it for a while. But yeah, no, it's good. They do some cool visual tricks for it being on a Game Boy. Um, there's this cool system in there where you can fuse these stones with people around the world so if you come up to somebody and they have like a thought bubble you can hit the l button and they'll be like oh do you want to fuse stones and if you have the right stone they'll connect together and that'll (coughs) oh sorry about (coughs) the coughing i have a i've had a cold in the last few days um if you fuse the right the, the right stone together uh it'll open up like secrets in the world and and new treasure chests throughout the world that's always uh that's really fun and there's just a ton of them i think I think I found Tingle and he was like, you have at least 80 more to go. And I'd already done like at least 20. So there's got to be close to like a hundred of these little secrets you can unlock. Okay. Yeah. That part's pretty good. Um, and it's quite a funny game. Your, cause your hat talks to you. Um, but yeah, just a really nice looking game boy advance game for sure with all the shrinking and then getting to see things up close and whatnot. I'm, I don't know exactly how many dungeons there are. I think there's about five. I was looking five or six. Okay. So I'm, I think I'm at least over halfway through it. Um, uh, but yeah, no, I'm enjoying it. And uh, I'm surprised that I'm so into it after having gone through Majora's Mask so recently and just playing another uh, Zelda game. But yeah, no, that's, that's a fun game. Um, and yeah, that's, that's all I, I think that's all I've been playing. Cool. Yes. What about, what about you? What have you been playing? I've been playing Duck Game. Man, that game is good. Yeah, I, I saw this, and what is Duck Game? It is basically, think, like, uh, it's a 2D fighting game sort of thing, like a Smash Bros, like, four players, free-for-all sort of thing. <clears throat> okay. But you're ducks, and <laughs> there are different gun types that you can, like, pick up and shoot each other So it's with. ducks with guns. It's ducks with guns, basically. Okay. 
Are the ducks themselves, like, do they have different stats or anything? No, but they have different okay. hats to change how you look. So you can tell where you are on the screen and because silliness. Okay. It's an adult swim game. So All right. Some interesting stuff has come out of that. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's real, real good. I was actually skeptical about it. I heard about this like two weeks ago or a week ago or whenever they kind of released it or people were talking about it. I was like, that sounds fucking stupid as shit. And then I played it with John because he like wanted to play it. So I was like, fine, I'll play it with you. And that's one of my favorite games to play with people right now because it's just fun. It's stupid fun. Um, there is a single player component to it, but it's not really great. It's nothing special. It's like a challenge mode, like challenge rooms, like shoot all the targets and then get to the end in, under a certain time limit or that sort of thing. So it's nothing too special. The thing about it is playing with a bunch of friends and uh, there is a button dedicated to quacking. Which is great because you just spam. Does that, that do button. anything, or is it like a taunt? Uh, when you quack a thousand times, you get a new mask. So I think, as far okay. as it, that goes, that's all it does. There's also... does it does it like impede your movement though, like a taunt, or is <clears throat> no. it just a sound? It's just a sound that you can oh, okay. spam constantly <laughs> if you. So want like all to. four people are spamming that, and it's just a mess. Yeah, pretty much. This this sounds like the like laugh or like the shout button in Mario Party. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> right? You know, when it's, like, not your turn, you can just keep hitting R or whatever, and Mario will go, like, Yahoo! Sure, and yeah, everyone yeah. just does that, and it's the worst. <laughs> sure. I hate Mario Party. Okay. Yeah, I kind of do, too. Are the stages good? Like, Yeah, the stages usually revolve around, like, they're different. Some of them are huge and, like, with a bunch of stuff on them, but some of the funner ones are dumb. Like, there's this one that's just... I don't know, man. You can't... It's very, very small. Like, you can't get very far in it. And the only weapon available on it is grenades. So there's just, like, shit blowing up, and you're trying to, like, huddle in the corner to try to live. Like, okay. Like, shit like that. That's pretty cool. Or um, there's another stage where the only gun you get is, like, a net gun. So you, like, catch somebody in a net, and they can't get out. But more importantly, it kind of launches them with, like, physics-based momentum or whatever when you hit them with it. Okay. And the stage itself is just a platform, so you were trying to knock everybody off, basically, to kill them. So it's basically whoever gets the net gun first and shoots the other dude wins. <laughs> like, I right. don't know. There's there's some neat stuff in that game. Can you fly? Like, that seems like that might kind of break the game. You can you can fly if you pick up a jetpack, like okay. an item to fly. Otherwise, you do a glide. Like, you can glide downwards. As you're falling, okay. so you so you can like jump and then you'll glide, or yeah, you can jump? jump and then okay. yeah, you can jump and then glide like off a platform to another platform, or if you're falling, but you can't like flap your wings and fly around. No, no. Okay, all right. Yeah, so if you get thrown off the ledge or whatever, you're not getting back up, basically. Okay. But uh, yeah, I that game is the type of game I want to get together a whole bunch of people and do a tournament on or something like that would be is, fun. Is it, does it have online multiplayer or yes. is it local? And it, okay. it's online multiplayer and it works very well. Cool. Yeah. Cool. The net code for so it is this really steam. Good. It is on steam. Yeah. For, okay. from adult swim games, they've been really uh, pimping it out to you. Like, okay. I'm surprised I hadn't heard about it. People streaming it, Adult Swim games have just had like a PR person basically go into every stream of Duck Game for the last while and throw codes out to people watching so they could play too. That's really cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's that awesome. is really cool. So good on them for doing yeah, that. Like I'm, I can't remember which game specifically, but I think a few like like reason like noteworthy and like quality games have come out of Adult Swim recently. I'm gonna see what they've done. How much does the game run for anyway? Uh, you know, I don't actually remember. I think it's like ten bucks. It's not very expensive. I think you can buy a four pack too, so you can make sure you always have people to play with if you want. Oh, they did um that Westerado game. That was a lot of people were really into that. Yeah, the guy we talked to, like who guessed it last week, that was one of the games he was playing. He said it was really good. Oh, they published Jazz Punk. Yes. Crazy Fist Puncher. Yep. Uh, actually, I like Super House of Dead Ninjas or whatever. Volgar the Viking. Volgar, they did. Yeah, that's right. Oh my gosh! Yeah, they've done like you wouldn't think Adult Swim games would be like, like anything than just crappy Flash games on the internet, but no, they've done some stuff. They're quite high quality gaming. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. 
That's that's cool. So the, as we're speaking right now, it is on a small sale. It's usually about fifteen bucks. You can get it for about ten bucks now, and you can get a four pack for about thirty. Cool. I think today's the last day of the Steam sale, if that's correct. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. It's the oh yeah, twenty first. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So that was fun for a while. I tried Hearthstone. I loaded up Hearthstone again and tried it up the new Tavern Brawl, the mode that'll bring in a new like challenge deck or idea every week a week right i heard about this yeah so this week it's ragnaros versus nefarian so it's two pre-made decks and it's weird because i really don't ragnaros's gimmick is that he starts off with sulfurus the his hammer his giant hammer thing as a weapon and his hero power blows (laughs) but when you kill it's like summon a 5-1. It's summon the Raging Fire Elemental or whatever, the 5-1 okay. that can be killed off by everything, basically. Right, but it's really powerful for almost free. That's that's the trade-off. Well, the thing is, is that when you waste his weapon, that changes to his normal deal 8 uh, damage to a random minion. So you want to kill off that minion really fast. The imbalance is, is that Ragnaros starts at one mana at the beginning of the game. Nefarian starts at five mana, and he has oh, wow. giant dragons <laughs> to throw out okay. at you. So you're sure. trying to get rid of like your weapon so you can actually clear his board as soon as you can. And that right. weapon takes six swings. So by the time you're at six mana, you can finally start using your stupid like good thing. Until then, Nefarian has his... Uh, his hero power is to randomly generate like a class spell. So if your Nefarian you're facing is really good with RNG, he'll just have a bunch of fireballs to throw at you or like a bunch of really cool shit. Or if he has bad RNG, like bad luck, he's going to have like fucking not like maybe some rogue cards that make people disappear or something like it could depend who, how the match goes. And there's there's kind of a cool thing about it. The thing I don't like about this mode right now, though, is that you need at least a level 20 class. Like, a, you need to level up a class to level 20 to be able to unlock it when this is the obvious casual mode. Like, I want to log in and just, like, play some dumb game with a pre-made deck. That's what this is. Yet you oh, have... yeah. I was, cause I was just thinking, like, this seems cool. It's a reason for me to like jump in once a week and see what the new thing is. If you have a cl- level twenty, I don't think I have. I don't think I have a level twenty. I don't yeah. know what I have at the moment. You get at but... least level ten just by doing the tutorial stuff. Like, oh, okay. I, I have no idea what I'm so, at. It's been a while since I looked. Yeah, I don't. I really <clears throat> don't like that. There's a cap on it because that's the fun casual mode. Like, leave it open, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> I do like that. You don't have to pay money or like coins or gold in game to open it you can just play that's really yeah. nice but um that is kind of the reason now that i will probably be loading up hearthstone every now and then is to play cool. the weekly thing cool i'm interested to hear what the what they throw in there yeah yeah no it's been real cool final fantasy 7 i've been playing that because of an announcement that was made i don't know if you heard about it but either way uh, i went back to that i have yesterday. no idea what you're talking about yeah I mean, yeah. maybe by next week we'll know. I'll but, probably know what you're talking about by then. Yeah, I got this weird feeling to maybe go back and see if that game was any good. Uh, spoiler alert, it still kind of is. Okay. I, I've never really cared about Final Fantasy. I have played through it most of the, like, I've played through seven at least three times in my life. So. Oh, that's you're crazy into Final Fantasy seven then. No, because that's been three times over, like, what, almost that, 20 years? Okay, well, just putting it my way. <clears throat> The number of games I've gone through more than once, yeah, I could count on like one hand. I could okay. probably count on like two fingers. Like if I'm trying to think about it, it's like that most recent P- Prince of Persia game. <laughs> oh the, yeah, the movie tie-in one. Yeah. It wasn't actually a movie tie-in because I was like, I'm just gonna get all the achievements, and I was able to go through it in like three hours. Other than that, um, that wasn't like a rogue. A, a roguelike i i don't think there's been another game but uh, okay oh uh catherine because i wanted to see different cho- choices i think that's it i think those are the only games i've gone through more than once so hearing that you've gone through this three times that's insane and also that game is long 
It can be, yeah. <laughs> so the first time I did it was when it came out, like, way earlier. Then I did it again with, or by myself, found it boring. I don't actually think I finished it that time, so that doesn't count, I guess. And then the third time was with my roommate because she wanted to play it again, and I was like, fine, whatever, we share a living room, so we'll play together. And just, like, pass the controller back and forth. That was totally fine. Like, that game is kind of fun to have somebody to just chat with and joke around with during the shitty, boring parts. (coughs) And then during the cool parts, you can just hang out and, like, appreciate it. So I decided to try it up again. I got it on Steam. And I am so fucking angry. I played about two to three hours of it. And I lost my save file. So it's gone. That is wasted time. I, I... That that's what happened uh, with me in Final Fantasy IV, and I was really liking that game, and then it just corrupted, and I was like, "Well, that's that. There you go." But I'd put close to like twenty hours and stuff into it and whatnot. Yeah, the reason it did that is because there was there's a cloud saving for the Steam version, and it wouldn't let me save locally at a save point at all for some reason. Every time I went to one, it just said now saving like in the top left corner, like cloud saving sync or something like that. And then when I closed it because I needed to restart it, I went to load, nothing there. So I'm just like, okay, it says it's still like connecting the cloud in the top left corner. And then sure enough, like could not connect to cloud server. So that save is gone. That save is gone completely. What if you were like playing offline? Yeah, I mean, I I would probably have to. If I played offline, I could probably probably save locally at the save yeah. points, and it would have been fine. But for some reason, it didn't. It's not working. And when I when I played Final Fantasy VII, I didn't finish the first disc. I played for a while. Yeah, I didn't finish the first disc. Have you ever finished that game? No, I've never got past the first disc. Oh, ever? Oh, okay. Ever? I've only gone. Th- I've only play- had one playthrough. Like I said, I don't play games more than once, typically. Sure. Um, I don't even remember where I was, but I remember I had put a good chunk of time into it, but just didn't finish the first disc. Did somebody important die? <laughs> no, not even yet. Not yet. <laughs> oh, man, you are. I don't know who Jesus. you're talking about. Yeah. Like, I'm trying to think where I may have gotten to. It was something like, I think one of the most last things was you were at some like desert rock town or something like that. Okay. I don't know. This has been it's been years. This has been years. I don't even know. Okay. I remember I missed getting Yuffie. Yuffie. Mm. Yeah. And I was like, I'm an idiot. This <laughs> I suck. Because yeah. wasn't her thing like I guess spoilers a little bit for Final Fantasy VII. Like she finds you in like a forest, and then she's like, "All right, let's battle again." Like you beat her, and she's like, "Let's battle again." And you're supposed to say no. Mm-hmm. And then she'll join you. And I was like, screw you. Yeah, I'll fight again. You were easy to beat. And then she like <laughs> takes off and it's like, well, now you don't get her. And it's like, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking video games. Yeah. Um, Anyways, I anyway. was um, I was kind of bummed because I was actually having fun again in it. And okay. it, it punished me for having fun. <laughs> by not do the models still more. look like ass? Yes. Yes, they do. Yeah. <laughs> but they look like clean ass, if that makes sense, because they're like, like high res. Every section of their arm is like a circle. <laughs> yes, they still <laughs> look like that, but like smooth because of up on the PC. Right. No, well, not for long. No. Um, again, we'll talk about that more next week. Yeah. <clears throat> so I was a little bit bummed about that. And then that directly ties into what I played afterwards. Akiba's Trip Undead and Undressed. Yeah. You're going to have to help me with this. How how do those it connect? It is a game where you are... Uh, okay, you know Blade, how he's like Daywalker or whatever, half vampire, half human sort of thing? You're ba- I know that. I have not seen the movies. Okay, you're basically that. Like, okay. you're that type of character. <laughs> and to kill vampires, you have to beat them up and take their clothes off in the middle of the street so they burn in the sun. Okay. Are any of these vampires... Yes. Male? Yes. Most oh, okay. most of them so far have been. Okay, I was assuming they were all just like busty girls. No. Okay. No, no it's a good mix like, of both. Well, because like the box art d- makes you assume this is all just ladies. Yes. Yes, it does. Yeah, <laughs> but... and the, all the promotional material. But um, no, so I was a, 
I was skeptical <clears throat> at first because weird anime game where you strip people sounds dumb. Yeah, no, for sure. And that game is so fucking dumb, but in the best possible <laughs> way. It is in the best possible okay. way dumb. So I wasn't really... F- the. I'll just get out what I my gripes with it are. The writing is pretty bad. The, some of the voice acting is god awful, and there are points of just like a lot of dialogue that you don't care about happening, and you just want to keep going with like anything else. Okay. Uh, the basic nice stuff, though. First of all, it looks beautiful. Like the nice clean anime style, very crisp, like high def sort of thing. Looks really good. Another thing that isn't too great, but it's whatever, is on the overworld, it kind of looks like an up uh, 3DS game. Like, there's a lot of weird tearing because there's a lot of black outlining around characters. Okay. If, if you know what I mean. Like, kind of pixely bit, yeah. edges until they get up close to you, like, characters, and then they look kind of fine. So, that's the problem with that, but it's not, it's a nitpick, if anything else. The So, what do you like about this game? It controls kind of nice. Like the fighting is pretty. <laughs> okay. The fighting is actually pretty fun and easy to do. And okay. I really <laughs> okay. So you beat up a bunch of dudes. Let right? me let me just. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me just see if I can figure this out. Yeah, do you yeah. like it when the girls get naked? Is that what you're trying to get to? I like it when everybody gets naked, and I'll tell you why. Okay, it's because <laughs> say there's like a group of like three or four dudes or ladies or like a mixture of both that you're fighting you can't rip their clothes off until like you have hit them enough so that their clothes start flashing showing that they can be like grabbed and thrown off or whatever much like real life right yeah and there are the three different points you have to get their headgear like if they're wearing headphones or like eye glasses or something like you always have head stuff they're like torso so shirts or sweaters or whatever and of course, their pants or like their skirts or whatever they're wearing. So naturally, the funnest thing is that you make <clears> it so like everybody's clothing are like blinking, right? And then when you start to rip one off, after you like rip it off of them, it does a quick time event to like combo into another person's or like another article of clothing. So okay. it is like. This is the part I like that's really dumb and anime-ish, is that they went full dumb anime in this video game where you basically beat them all up, and then you're just like, rip clothes off this guy, rip clothes off this girl, go back to this guy, rip his headgear off. <laughs> you're just like going back and forth to everybody in this group, ripping and their clothes one combo. off. It's so yeah. good. It's so fucking good. Okay. So, I really this like- This kind of sounds like mm. the worst thing ever. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> I'm just gonna say it's so but, great. It's so. Uh, great. I'm glad you're having fun. It, any idea like how long this game is? It's, it's is it a JRPG? Apparently, it's about eight hours. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. That's not. I was thinking like forty. It plays more like a Devil May Cry or something. It's like a hack and slash okay. type beat 'em up. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, there's still creepy stuff in it. Like, oh, I'm sure. when you're in camera, like, when you, there's a camera feature, because you have, like, an iPhone as your, like, menu device or whatever. So there's a camera feature, and there is a button to basically do, like, upskirt shots, if you want. Great. Awesome. Can you do, yeah. can you only do that to the ladies? I, I think you can do it to anybody. Like, you do it on the okay. street, so I could go up to a dude and, like, take a shot of his package from underneath if I wanted to. Okay. Well, I mean, like, at least there's a bit of a quality there, but... Sure. Yeah. Great. Okay. It's kind of fun, though. I gotta say, it's kind of fun. <laughs> I'm glad you're enjoying it. That's, are you gonna keep playing it? Um, You know, I don't know. I want to say okay. yes, but realistically, probably not, because <laughs> there's other stuff to play. I had fun with it, though. I liked it. Okay. Yeah. That's basically been it. That's it. I played. Okay, all right. Um, so yeah, we're gonna skip news. Like I said this week, um, well, there'll be a, basically only news next week. Um, but anyway, let's go into questions now. Yeah, questions. So if people want to write in, they can do so at Top Down Perspective <clears throat> at Gmail dot com or TDP Podcast on Twitter. Hit us up on that if you want. Maybe yeah. send in like start sending in E three comments and questions for next week or the week after or whatever. We'll get through those then. But for sure. Yeah. yeah. Not this week. We're doing no E three stuff this week. No E three stuff. Yeah. Okay, this first one. Uh 
AC3, the animator, says, for everyone there, is there a video game song you call your favorite? I mm, I want to say, like, just classically, it'll be the Legend of Zelda, like, theme, just the main theme. Because every time I, it's done in a different style or a remix, I just love it. My ringtone is... Um, um, actually, quick side note. I was looking at what you were playing last week, and you're playing yeah. Phoenix Wright? Yeah. Is this the first time playing Phoenix Wright? Yeah. Okay, cool. My ringtone is from Phoenix Wright. In fact, it's the, uh, the song that plays when like phoenix like gets it like, oh it's, man like, gets like like so heated good. and he's like all right here we go i'm gonna i'm gonna drop it down that's so fucking good and it's like dun, 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 dun. Yeah. yeah um that's my ringtone nice um, so probably that i really like that because whenever that happens you're just like oh shit is about to drop what's up with that one yeah but again side note uh are you you're just playing to the first one right now uh, the trilogy on 3ds. So yes, I'm playing through the first one right now. I that's a that's a great game. I need to play the other two, but that's a great game. I'm enjoying it. Uh, okay, uh, Dunsparce Parson Diglett says, if you could have a video game character be a guest on TDP, who would you want? Oh man, that's. <laughs> I mean. Mario, because he's like the character that would get all the hits and the listens. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. Who's who um, would be an interesting character to talk to? Like a villain, I think you'd have to get a villain and f- talk to them. Okay, follow me on this, yeah. Mister Rossetti from Animal Crossing. I've never played Animal Crossing. Okay, so if you don't know Mister Rossetti, if you just turn your game off without saving, yeah, when you turn it on next time, a mole comes out of the ground when you leave your house. And yells at you for so, like, and it's he yells at you for like long enough that it's supposed to be a punishment. You going through all this dialogue, mm-hmm. and I only really encountered this a lot uh, with the GameCube one. But if you keep doing it, eventually a story forms around this guy, and you're like physically harming him because he's there's so much stress he's going through, and eventually like his brother comes because he's in the hospital because <laughs> okay. he had like. A conniption and whatnot, and I think that'd be funny. Yeah, that would be. <laughs> That's um, ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, DJ Atomica. DJ Atomica. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah, it would. yeah. That'd be funny too. Somebody said Link in the chat. That's a great answer. <laughs> <laughs> Someone said definitely not Link in the chat. <laughs> Yeah, but they uh, said Kappa, so they want it. They okay. want everybody wants Link. So Link, what have you been playing? Hat, hat. This yeah. <laughs> is like, oh, okay. Gordon Freeman. Yeah, yeah. That'd be, uh, what about Gordon kind of... Ramsay? He's not a video game. <laughs> Actually, he has a video game. I would love to oh, talk to Gordon God. Ramsay. That'd be amazing. Guy Fieri. Guy Fieri would be terrible, but I would love. I it. hate. I hate him so much. I know. I hate him. Okay. Oh, that'd be that'd be <laughs> gross. Yeah. That'd be gross. Okay. Uh, Comet SX7 write, uh, writes in. I have to go run errands, but here's a question: favorite game, video game, or favorite video game father or father figure? All oh, right, it's Father's Day today. Happy Father's Happy Day. Happy Father's Day to everybody in the chat who's a father. I know it's favorite a lot of video you. game father. Um, Big boss. Link, because you know. <laughs> yeah, Cause yeah. You, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um. Mine there is Big Boss still. <laughs> like, legitimately. Big Boss, a father? Yeah, he's technically Solid Snake's father. Or oh, right. Like, yeah. yeah, the cloning stuff. The cloning sure. stuff. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think, like, a more serious one. I'm just trying to think. How many games, like, have fathers in them, really? Oh, you know what? Okay, here's a good one. Uh, Rusty from Rusty's Real Deal Baseball. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You have a 3D. Did you ever play that game? No, I do have it though. That's a free download. You should play yeah. at least the first little bit. Okay. Uh, Cause that's a weird game and it's free. Yeah, I bet it is. And Rusty's a weird guy. Um, okay. Uh, Rohit writes, 
What do you think of Sonic Boom Fire and Ice? That's no. his first question. Let's, no let's start with that. I I hear Sonic Boom is terrible. So I really don't care about a follow-up. Sure. Uh, more importantly, though, have you guys seen the Sonic the Hedgehog Twitter account recently? The new profile manager is amazing. I would actually just say, yes, he is. Have you seen this? No. Okay, so I was just looking at the Sonic H- Hedgehog account recently. Okay. It's nothing It's nothing that great. It was a bit better uh, a couple weeks ago, but I retweeted one. I'll read this one real quick. Okay. Someone, someone uh, at replied to Sonic saying... I have to wonder how deep you've delved into your fandom. Have you seen anything you regret seeing? And Sonic wrote back, The things I have seen cannot be unseen. (laughs) I have gazed long into the abyss of the internet and felt the abyss gaze back. That's amazing. And And when I saw that, I was like, Is this the official Sonic the Hedgehog account? And it is. That's great. That's really Um, great. Again, I'd like to put more examples, but I just recently looked and was scrolling through, and there wasn't anything that great. It's a bunch of like fan art I just contest saw, stuff. I just see a picture of him posting a, at real life hedgehog that's giving a thumbs up. That's pretty yeah. great. Yeah. Um, but at least two weeks ago, there was one that I thought was uh, great enough that I uh, I retweeted that. So uh, hopefully, more of that's coming. I don't know how they managed to do that. It's like an intern is running that Twitter account or something, but. That that was great. Yeah, that's really cool. Good, good on them. <laughs> okay, and Amene writes in, Hey guys, this is my first time asking a question, so pardon my bad English and my odd way of typing. John knows me as a sprite artist of 100% orange juice, so yeah, um, anyway. Okay, cool. So I really like the sprite art in that. Oh, so good did, job. did this guy work on that game? Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. Okay. I really like the art in that game, so good job. I just, I, I don't like that game, though. But like, I like... <laughs> Well, it's a Mario Party game, but like the art in it, it is the nice reason I bought. Saying. It's the reason I bought it. So, okay. like that's saying something, I think. Uh, what do you three think of the recent release or recent release of the Japanese sound novel in existence, Hirogashi When They Cry, and the Siguri series? I guess Honey Pop and other games that sort. I think Honey Pop was a uh, an American made one though, like a Kickstarter one. So I don't think that was Japanese, but I have no idea. I haven't heard of either of these. Um, although there's definitely been a few Japanese games that I wish were getting ported and translated. What was I running into? Um, when I was finishing up VLR, uh, I was looking up what uh, the director had done before, and he's done a bunch of like visual novels before that, but none of them are available, or I think most of them aren't available uh, in English and whatnot. So I want more to come. Sure. Um, uh, I'm curious what this best Japanese sound novel is. I'm, I'll probably look that up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I think Steam should have tons of different games from Absolutely. all over the place. It's a pe- um, like the thing that Steam can do is be region free. So give us yeah. everything. <laughs> like yeah. And I would love it if yeah if you know even if they didn't translate it like the community could release something or even if you could just get like DLC and get like the English pack or something. Yeah. Cause unfortunately that's the only language I speak. Um, sure. But yeah, no more games are always better for sure. Absolutely. Uh, Joey says, Hola folks, uh, with a few questions. First one is for John. So we're going to skip that. We'll, we'll save that for <laughs> the next. Episode. Yeah. Um, these other ones are more generic. Okay. Two. Uh, what are some good uses of licensed music that you've seen in games, discounting rhythm games and the radio in GTA? Personally, I really like the use of Ain't No Rest for the Wicked in Borderlands, but only really because I'm a huge Cage the Elephant fanboy and was glad to see the band gain more recognition afterwards. That was a good uh, use. I would li- yeah, I would like to point out the Saints Row series. Saints Row the Third, when you drop yeah. out of the plane um, to power, that yeah, was incredible. It was too um, good. Also, Saint, was it Saints Row Third when is when you have yeah when you're doing the wrestling to you're the best around yeah 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 that was incredible and then the final mission to I want a hero that was just great that was yeah. awesome that was so good they kept um, that up in four too like at the very beginning don't want to or what's that Aerosmith song don't want to miss a thing while you're climbing up the rocket. Yes, yeah, like they're, they that, they're that really was, good. And then you give the thumbs up. Yeah, Saints Row One yeah. is is really good. Um, I'm trying to think of some other uh, choice mo- moments for sure. 
It's hard. Cause oh, I'm, um, yeah. we've been talking about Life is Strange. Yeah, great sure. use of the soundtrack in there. Sure. So I yeah. definitely love those two. Um, if I can think of anything else. Here's to you in Ground Zeroes was really good. That was really good. Yeah. I haven't. I don't know this. I can't even remember that. But uh. Anyway, there's a few. There's a yeah. few. Yeah. Yeah. And his third question. Uh, on the note of licensed music, what would be some things, uh, for example, music, story stuff, new mechanics, uh, that you would want to see in a hypothetical Elite Beat Agents sequel? Oh, man, what songs do you want to see in Elite Beat Agents sequel? I would love an Elite Beat Agents sequel, for one. Please. Um, that Hello Kitty song by Avril Lavigne. I have no idea what you're talking about. There's a Hello Kitty song by Avril Lavigne? Yeah, you can look it up after. <laughs> I is it like new or something? Is she still yeah. making music? Oh, okay. Kind of. Um, yeah. actually, along with that, I would love some just really dumb popular pop, sure. like like Call Me Maybe. Call Come Me Maybe, dude. Whatever. I love Call Me Maybe. I love that song. <laughs> it's so good. Um, um. How about how about uh? And this is an old one. Okay. But hear me out. How about the Thong song? <laughs> I feel like funny. watching yeah. three dudes in suits uh, dancing to that while they save someone's life would be pretty good. Sure. Um, song song would be, yeah, it would be pretty how dumb. About, how, about, how about Blurred Lines by Robin Thicke? <laughs> That'd be pretty thong bad. Song. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there's some other ones. Um, he also writes, on a side note related to a question you guys answered last week, mm-hmm. I actually have some strong associations with that game and an ex I had in high school. Her being the one who introduced me to that game and who tried in vain to get me into RuneScape and WoW. Mm. Even though the relationship went downhill pretty badly, I thankfully don't really have any negative associations with that game and any potential ones are immediately dispelled upon hearing its kick-ass rendition of Jumpin' Jack Flash. That game is great. I Elite love that. Beat Agents? Okay. Elite Beat Agents is so good. I'm going to counter what his last comment and go back to the question we were asked whenever he was right, wrote this in or whatever. I do have a negative association with Elite Beat Agents. What? Why? I broke my first DS ever playing it. <laughs> oh, man. I had man. to buy a new DS. That's a good game to go out on, though. At least it wasn't something dumb. Yeah. So I will say, like, um, that the best song is that Christmas level. What was oh man, it's that Christmas level. I can't even remember. Like the girl's dad like passes away or something. <laughs> and then through dance. Oh yeah. You bring his ghost back from the dead <laughs> so he can deliver a Christmas present. Yep. That's the it's the best level in that game. It's the best level in that game. It's pretty good. All right. Glenn writes in. Hey guys, I noticed the greatest revolution in today's modern FPS games is the inclusion of the double jump. It gets me thinking, what mechanic from the FPS would really revolutionize platformer games? I'd really like aim down sights option for every Mar- for <laughs> Mario every time he throws fireballs. That'd be so bad. <laughs> like what would that just be like his fist? Oh, like an open hand. Oh, I'm an idiot. Okay, platformers can be 3D too. There are 3D Mario games that would work somewhat, maybe. <laughs> God. Oh, okay. I thought, I was, well, yeah. I thought, no, I I, I want to go back to your statement. I still think that would be so bad if all of a sudden it just zoomed in from his perspective with his like hand out. Yeah, there are games uh, that do that though. That go from the third person to the first when you're aiming. And it's weird. Uh, yeah, like um, it's uh that Tom Clancy game, Ghost Recon series or whatever, does that. I was trying to think. I was thinking of the of the game Shadow Warrior, which is terrible. <laughs> Shadow Warrior, you're not third person in that. Oh no, sorry, you're first person, and it goes to third person when you're in cover. It does the opposite. Oh. It does the opposite. Um, okay, shooter ge- mechanics in games. How about? Okay, all right. Yeah. So we'll just use Mario again as an example. Yeah. You get hit by something, you know, you flash, you get small, but also just, you know, vignetting around the edge of the screen is like a blood splatter, Call of Duty style. Sure. (laughs) (laughs) That'd be so terrible. That would be. Um, what other shooter? 
or mechanics. Uh, I like active reload. Like if you had a platformer where you're shooting as well. Okay, yeah, like Gears of War style active sure. reload. Yeah, those are usually pretty good. Like I do like the like the risk reward of getting the reload faster. Yeah. Um, although that many sh- like platforming shooters, you like don't really ever have to reload. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I guess if you did. <clears throat> I can't really think of that many mechanics and shooters that are like su- super un- unique to them. Like, cause like, you know, cover based stuff wouldn't work. Yeah. Sliding is already in, uh, platformers. Um, someone in the chat says, uh, Splatoon has the blood splatter kind of, yeah, I guess that's true. That's true. Um, anyway, uh, I don't think I'm going to get anything funnier than the Me, blood splatter yeah. one. Yeah. All right, Matthew, it's in again with the NPD numbers. Thank you, Matthew. Um, too bad John's not here. He loves these. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, uh, shorter one this week. Uh, the PlayStation 4. Uh, I guess this is last month. This is probably May's numbers. Probably, yeah. PlayStation 4, 152,000. Xbox mm. One, 139,000. Uh, the Wii U, 42.5,000. What Did Splatoon come out this month or last month? Because I feel like that should have been like a bump with Splatoon. Isn't that thing major popular? Splatoon is and actually on this list too. So it must have come out last month. I'm surprised the Wii U didn't didn't get more than that. Uh, 3DS ninety seven thousand. The Witcher less than seven hundred thousand. Okay. PlayStation Four was approximately sixty percent of it. Final Fantasy X HD hmm. uh, <clears throat> was approximately sixty thousand. Okay. Cars all is what it. It, does he mean like Pixar cars? What is this? Cars. Uh, or is it an acronym for something? Because it's all capitalized. Yeah, it's probably cars. an acronym. What is cars? All oh, 60. Anyway, it's 60.5 thousand. Splatoon, 136 thousand. Uh, P and D. I don't. What is that? P and D. P and D. I have no idea what that yeah. is. Let me look it up. What is PND? Nothing comes up. <clears throat> People are thinking maybe project cars for cars. Um, it says all though, and that's only one game. Uh, I th- I'm thinking he's thinking platform. Anyway, PND less than thirty two thousand, and Devil Survivor two less than twenty three thousand. Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, I don't know if this is the same Matthew. No, nope. but Matthew it's writes this, in because this next Matthew has two T's in it. <clears throat> oh, here we go. P P and D puzzles and dragons. Thank you, chat. Right, right. Thank you, chat. Yeah, perfect. Smart. That's a smart chat we got here. Smart. Yeah. Uh, Matthew writes in. Best deal you got from this year's summer sale? Best deal you saw in a game you already had? I myself picked up 100% orange juice for really cheap and bought my sister a copy of Hatoful Boyfriend. Another awesome game. Also saw Honey Pop on there for cheap. Had a Pop Boyfriend was like a dollar or something. Yeah, that's a great game. That is, like, not even kidding. You have to read the story of that game, like, on <laughs> Wikipedia or something. It is fucking crazy. I need to play that game at some point, yeah. Yeah. Um, Honey Pop's a good deal, did, too. Did you buy anything for the sale? Absolutely not. I, no. I bought two games. Okay. I bought uh, Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky, because I've been waiting for that. I hear it's really good. Okay. Um... And it's never on sale. Uh, and then just uh, before this, I bought Grow Home, which is a pl- uh, small platformer that came out from Ubisoft earlier this year, which I was hearing a lot of great things. Um, other deals that I saw in games I already had, uh, I, you know, I didn't even, usually I just like, I can't think of anything at the moment because it just, I didn't even focus on them. I guess I could load it up for this encore sale. Actually, you know what? I bought a Kiba's Trip, and that was probably somewhat on sale, but it it wasn't like a featured thing. I don't think when I bought it. Most things were on sale for sure. Let yeah. Me, let's see what's on sale right now. But yeah, no, I was noticing that uh, you guys weren't buying a ton of stuff uh, this trip. Okay, this yeah. uh, time around. We have the problem was, that we own. What was too the much? monster? What was the the monster like? The game thing? I didn't even look into that. The what monster? 
there's well oh you, it was a uh, like cookie clicker type oh game. okay oh all right all right um the yeah, okay i think child of light for three bucks is a pretty good deal yeah um oh did you lo- just load up the page i just loaded i just loaded up the page right now okay. i'm just kind of going through it seeing what what i would have wanted to p- pick up if i didn't already have them oh yeah that's actually smart banner saga for five dollars that's mm-hmm. a good deal Castle Crashers is a dollar, like fifty, but that game's hella old. Yeah, I was gonna say, doesn't everybody have it already? I, I would assume everyone has it. Yeah, <clears throat> um, Ori being forty percent off is pretty good considering how uh, how recent that game is, and I really like Ori. Yeah. Um, Tomb Raider is Dishon- five bucks. That Dishonored is five bucks. The two thousand thirteen uh, Tomb Raider <clears throat> for anybody who hasn't that, that, played that yet. That game is great. Yeah. Um, and with recent news related stuff, um, I want to play Dishonored one. Um, yeah, but so that game's like five bucks right now. But uh, oh, Hyper Dimension Neptunia Rebirth one is on sale. Valkyria Chronicles five bucks. I hear that game's real good. <clears throat> I think I'm actually gonna buy Hyper Dimension <coughs> Neptunia right now. Oh well, there you go. Cool. Um, Grim Fandango Remastered is fifty percent off. I should probably get that because I've never played it. And then, you know, I always re- I like Life is Strange a lot, so any d- deal on that's probably good. But anyway, there's a few things. Yeah, for sure. Log it out. All right, uh, last one comes in from uh, Hannah. She has a few. She says, hey, guys, unfortunately, I only have a couple questions for Sean. Sorry, Paul. All right, I'm out. See you guys later. <laughs> I recently got an Xbox One for my birthday. Oh, there you go. Congrats. And I was uh, messing around with it, and I recalled a few things Sean has said before. One, Sean, I recall you mentioned that a lot of the Xbox fitness stuff uh, was tried, but you needed to pay for it. Uh, well, was trialed. I see what you said. But you needed to pay for it. Uh, but did you know that it, if you have Xbox Gold, you can get some workouts for free? Uh, yes. Uh, even with that, uh, additional stuff is still needing to be paid for. So you do get some stuff for free, but further on, Uh, Like, I think the example I was doing was because I was looking into the P90X stuff since I know the majority, I know that one pretty familiar, and it was, uh, you got, like, two of the workouts on there and uh, stuff like that. Uh, And the second thing she writes is, also, I remember you griping about Fantasia a lot, but how much into music are you? I asked because I demoed the game before and recently bought a copy, which I'm super excited about. But I also took a music theory class and really enjoyed directing music, which is essentially what this is. Cool. I mean, I like rhythm games a lot. Um, I just found that that game got quite repetitive recently. Uh, The progression is really slow. um, And, you know, I wasn't that engaged with it. So I guess if you are into the the directing aspect, but... uh, I guess I, I wasn't like how how should I how should I say this I, immersed enough to feel like I was actually directing it, uh-huh. um, so I just kind of got tired of like the same few things happening. Like you're basically watching like a music like visualizer um, while, while trying to wave your arms around a bit. So yeah, it wasn't really for me. Um, it sounds like it had side, a very side note niche in the market. chat. Everyone is paying respects to my PS3 again this week. Thank you. So very much. The PS3 is still just in a box at my parents' house. It's still fine. <laughs> it's still completely fine. But once again, thank you, everyone. Um, and thank you, everyone, for writing in. Yeah. Um, again, uh, top down perspective at gmail.com or at TDP Podcast on Twitter. Uh, there's the Facebook group. And um, what is your, uh, what's your game of the week? Oh, Duck Game. Duck Game. Yeah. Uh, mine's got to be a Minish Cap. Uh, but I do urge anyone with an iOS device to try out Fallout Shelter. Um, does that seem like something you're w- sad that you can't play? Like when that comes to Android, are you going to be excited? I don't even know if you're into Fallout. Uh, yeah, I'll play it for sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, it it looks fun. Like I'm not sad about it really because I've been playing Phoenix Wright on my like DS as my mobile game so lately. But it's real good. Uh, Shelter seems like it would be a good like when that's done to take place of my I'm bored at work sort of thing on my phone. So, yeah, 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 that's true. Um, I really need to play Phoenix right too. I need to play the next ones. Um, yeah, but I kind of just, I kind of just want to get them on my iPad again. Cause it'd be bigger screen and stuff like that. But anyway, 
Yeah. That'll do it. We'll be back later this week with a big long three podcast. Uh, I'm excited for that. Yeah, I have to that'll be watch good. all those all those conferences though. But also, we'll be back. Yeah, yep. if you're on Twitter, throw some of your opinions on E3 and the E3 TDP hashtag so we can take a look at what you guys have been thinking about some of this stuff. Even if yeah, I've, E3's over. I've been posting. But... E3's yeah. over, but it's, yeah, I'm still going through it. I've been posting on there. Yeah. Um, talking about conferences, talking about salads I'm eating, you know, all the important stuff. The salad um, is the most interesting part. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so we'll be back next week. Thanks, yes. everyone, for tuning in. We'll see you later. Bye.